Hi, welcome back to another Terrence Gapes video. Uh, sort of dropped out there for, I don't know, what was it, maybe two weeks? Uh, but that is because I really needed to sit down and focus on these ocean boards, which is the topic of today's video, uh, because they have been uh, probably, I think, the most challenging project I've ever taken on um, and um, much more time consuming than I expected, hence the uh, video that showed the work in progress. If you haven't seen that video, it's the very previous one very previous one to this one uh, and um, it sort of shows the entire process for doing the waves on one of the boards. I'm going to show you that board up close today uh, but um, you know if you uh, saw the uh, title cards to that one it, it took me uh, about 10 hours. I think that's about what it's averaging per board um, and that is just for the wave effects. That doesn't include pouring the resin and doing the sand and the rocks and uh, there's plenty of finishing work to go on each of the boards as well at the end. So I needed some time to sit down with them and uh, kind of think about that and uh, think about how long they were going to take me to complete and really make a push on them. So uh, got that done. Feel like I understand them a little bit better and uh, like the way they're coming out despite the amount of time that uh, they're taking. And really, uh, that is what's important to me. It's not about how long they take. It's about how well they look at the end always. Um, so when customers contract with me, that's what they're really contracting for. It's not about... Uh, it's not about getting it done in the budget, it's about getting it done right. So, in any case, um, I want to show you some of the challenges that the boards have uh, in terms of the corners. I've done two of the corners, you can kind of see them in the back here. So we're going to take a closer look at those, tell you a little bit about how I try to solve the problems, and then give you a couple close-ups of some of the uh, details that I've added. So just before we come in close on it, I wanted to give you an overview of the boards and talk a little bit about how in the, the macro sense uh, they're coming along. So this is the board uh, that I did for the previous video. And uh, what I'm really uh, focusing on today is this, you know, this is what I'm calling, you know, this is a, what I'm calling, it's what it is. It's a concave corner. And the concave corner is easier to do than the convex, which is the second one here. And that's mainly because the waves are, um, you know, coming in. If you, if you notice here, right, I've got the uh, lines of the waves. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, just so you can uh, get a sense. All right, if you notice here, these waves are angled this way. All of the waves are designed to strike the shore in this direction, all right, which means that they need to strike the shore on this side, this direction. Whoop, oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> no retakes, if I can help it. Um, so you'll notice here that they're coming in this direction and then they're coming in this direction to strike, right? So I want these directions to match up. So they're coming up here, they're coming in here. Now, on the concave board, that's working out quite well because we have them coming up like this which works well for this uh, corner and we have them coming in like this which works well for this corner and so the overall wave structure looks really uh, believable and plausible. However, it's been a real challenge to work with the convex corners because the shore is relatively small, it's reduced quite a bit and getting the waves to sort of meet, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have left these boards for the very last, uh, but it's the way I poured them and where they were at. Um, so am I 100% happy? Now listen, okay, here, here's the finger for everybody who worries about me uh, criticizing my own work. This is not about me saying I suck, <laughs> but it's about saying where I would like to see improvements if they're possible and also to instruct you on things to look out for. So when I say eh, I'm not as happy about it as I could be, that's uh, as much for you as it is for uh, me. All right. So remember that. And I don't think I could do a much better job with these because of the caveats of making them modular. So am I happy with the way the waves are perfectly aligned with each other? No, 
but I have to make concessions to make them modular because these boards need to be able to be rotated to meet any other corner and need to be able to receive uh, open water boards up in this area, right, or over in here. So I need to have the angle of the waves uniform on all the edges. And actually, that took me a second to figure out because you may notice um, right here, I made a cut. This was my very first thought on how to handle this edge and these angles and fix all of this. And what I thought I would do is make this a cut and then have these waves coming like this over here and having these waves come like this. And then it would sort of be a compromise for the ocean uh, open water boards. But I didn't like that having you know them not be uniform to the edge of the ocean boards out here. And it occurred to me that what I needed to do actually was to make the cut here. And then I can have this whole edge with all the water going the right way. And then I can have this whole edge with the water going the right way and this whole edge, right? So all the edges now actually have the water traveling in a uniform direction and allow for the modularity. But making that cut here and putting in the different angle makes this corner a real challenge. So I've bent the waves to accommodate that. And it's not too bad on this board, actually, if I have to say. If I had to have any improvements, I'd like to have this just a little bit more like this, so it kind of matches this a little bit more. It's okay, but that would be an area I'd like to tackle. And this is actually gonna need a little bit of work behind it. Oh, uh, as a final, before I, just as a, as a note, you may see differences between the boards, um, right? The, the shore isn't finished here and some of the wave effects don't match. Um, I will be going back over all the boards at the end, probably an hour a board, to bring all of the water effects in alignment with the set as a whole. So I'm not worried about these variations at the moment because they're all gonna get touched up at the end. All right, so that's enough about this corner. This corner, and uh, um, I'm not going to zoom in because it's going to come out of focus and I'm not going to deal with it. <clears throat> so squint if you need to, or hopefully you have a big monitor. This board, oh boy, this one was a real trick and I really wasn't sure how to handle it. And in fact, I even had a moment where I was going to start cutting off waves because I've never done that before and I didn't want to do it. And I was like, no, it needs to be better. And then I realized actually I had done, I think the best that I could. Um, so what, what's really going on here that's a different between these two is this large sort of peninsula shape, I wanted to add a little variety, has put a real um, uh, prominence that is encouraging the waves to strike at an even stronger angle compared to each other. Now, when they're traveling in this direction, right, they're coming this way and that works fine, but you'll see um, here's where I've made the cut to change the angle to come in. So these waves are coming in fine, but it gives it a little bit of an unrealistic look in terms of the actual water dynamics because it really looks like this kind of spiraling and the waves wouldn't really make that strong of a bend in the real world. But I don't want this edge to look out of place when it's put up against another board because those waves will be coming this direction. So after really looking at it and thinking about how to fix it, I realized that the best I could do would be to actually cut like only this wave off. And that's not going to change it, right? Because all of these waves are all um, pretty much where they need to be. So. Oh. It's one of the sacrifices for modularity. You know, I always talk about that. There's a compromise between playability and appearance and, you know, form and function and all of that. And in this case, um, this is probably the most compromised board for the modular aspect. Um, but it does have some nice things going on. Um, and I, and I, you know, so, mm, you know, all right, we'll take the good, we'll take the bad. Um, but it was something that really surprised me. And this board took a long time. <laughs> because it's really almost like two boards put together. I don't know. And I had a lot of thinking to do. So uh, we're done with that board. We're, we're done. You, me, we're all done with this board. Um, so 
I probably rambled on enough about this, but I just wanted to really give you that total, you know, sort of perspective. I've only shown you straight boards to this point, and this is some of the challenges that have been happening with the corners. Um, but boy, I really liked how this one came out. A lot easier with this convex uh, shape. And uh, this one sort of not too bad. A little tweak here and there, I think would have been nice. Um, but, uh, you know, and as a last thought, and this is it, can I just say, maintaining some uniformity across this project is really, really tough because there's so much involved in each of the stages to going into one board. And uh, that's why I will need to go back in and do some, some tidying up at the end to get them all back in the line. So I've been really stressed about getting these all to look with the same level of quality and detail and trailing foam and, and wave breaks and heights of the waves and the slopes behind them. And you know, it's, it's not uh, just one little aspect to try to bring them in alignment. So there's definitely gonna be some touch up at the end and it has been the most challenging aspect um, of, of any project I think I've ever done, so. With that said, I'm going to show you two quick close-ups uh, so you can get a sense of some of the detail. So taking a look, this is the board again that I showed the um, complete construction of all the water effects in the previous video. And I just wanted to highlight a couple key um, things that I made some changes on and tried to play with. Um, the first were the actual splashes. And remember I said before, um, a couple videos back, that I felt like I was missing something about them. And what I realized is that it needs some uh, negative space, really. It's a lot like trees, right? When a wave splashes, it's not like this uniform sheet. It fractures. And so what I tried to do is retain some negative space uh, within the waves so that it would look a little bit more fractured. Now, if I had my druthers, I'm not going to do it, but if I had my druthers, I would try to get a little bit more of a finer structure in here. Um, but that would be uh, pretty difficult and add quite a bit more work to these pieces, and they're taking a little bit of time as it is. Um, so I'm happier with them like this, um, but uh, I don't know, some finer structure in there to bring it more into scale I think would help. Uh, but in any case, um, what I tried to do as well, push this back just a little bit, is I'm trying to really think about where the water is striking and, and where it's sloughing back off. Um, surging waves, right, they've got an in and an out motion. Um, they're, they're welling up, they're rolling back off the rocks. And so, you know, I'm trying to take that into account, right, here's the water rolling back off, it forms its own little uh, spill. You know, the water's surging up and splashing. Um, here, you know, right, it's, it's piled up and is rolling back off. Here it's kind of coming over, right? There's, there's a lot of action to try to model and that has been really what's been wrecking my head when I work on these is I'm trying to think about fluid dynamics the whole time and, uh, and then model the fluid dynamics the way I think they should be. Very, very challenging. I think my eye is getting a little bit better um, and my, my handling of the materials is getting a little bit better but man, it is just a real brain, brain twe uh, tweak brain tweak uh, every, every board because every board is different. So one of the other things um, that I did here is I tried to model if a wave rolled up and it flowed over, right, it would fill this trough, um, which is nice. I think it actually adds quite a bit to this rock. And then when this fills high enough, right, it's going to flow over this edge and spill out into the front. But as it flows up, it's also going to backwash. So I've tried to uh, capture some of that backwash here and then uh, model some of that water flowing through here. Um, trying to add a little foam. Wasn't really quite sure how much to add. It's going to be heavy at first and dissipate and, you know, so I made a, just a stab at it. I think it's all right. It's not too strong. Um, and then um, let's see if we can come around to the front here. Hopefully I can keep everything in frame. Um, so that gives you another um, angle at the side here. So as this wave is coming across, right, I'm trying to have it, uh, you know, rake across this rock as it goes. And I've been playing a little bit more with um, foam on the rocks. It's very subtle. I, I, I think, eh, I don't know if it's even noticeable enough, but it's what I want to see there. So I'm putting it in, but you can see a little foam uh, rolling off the rock. And uh, excuse me while I move this, let's just take a quick peek at the front. Oh, oh okay. Let's uh, 
There we go. Pardon my camera movement. All right, we're gonna take that. And um, so here I'm trying to have, you know, the water rolling off, coming out, spilling into this area, have waves come in, have waves come in, uh, fill this in. Ooh, this was mm -hmm, mm, tricky, um, but um, I, I'm pretty okay with it. Um, and again, you know, at the very end, I might do just a tiny bit of tweaking and I feel pretty good about how I can do that without disturbing the board. You know, I, I, I'm not going to mess it up by adding an extra layer of um, caulking to it. I've been doing that and I have a pretty good sense of it. Last thought on this board, I thought I'd try and change again the way the waves are breaking. So as this is coming in right here's the deeper channel of this little cove. So this is going to be the last spot to break and so I thought I would have the waves kind of breaking in towards this and then um, having it uh, spill off that way. And I might go in, uh, we'll see how much time I have left in my my stamina. I'm already almost over budget and there's a lot of work to do. So this is, at this point, really, it's about how much love I want to put into them. But um, this really needs to be a little smoothed out. Uh, you know me. All right. Anyway, um, so that gives you a look at that board. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, convex board that was the most challenging. Okay. Taking a look at this board, um, this was really my first uh, rock after my initial rock where I said I had it a little too choppy. So I've tried to roll back some of that chop and I think you can see even from this rock to the one I just showed you some improvements, at least I do, um, because uh, you know I've, I think I'm getting a better handle on the motion of the water. You know, saying that, I don't think these are going to look too um, you know, conflicting. They're not disparate between each other, but um, I, I feel I can see improvements each time I do it. And that's the interesting thing about this project, which also makes it challenging, is doing 10 boards means I get 10 times to play with this. And when I want to improve it, I can't go too far out of alignment unless I can bring the other boards up to that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really been an interesting project. I can't say enough about how different it feels than anything I've ever done in the past. Um, but in any case, um, so here you can see, you know, I've put the splashing here, I've tried to roll it over this edge, um, you know, reduce the chop on this backside um, because it's not gonna have the motion, but I have seen in uh, videos and pictures, right, there's still a lot of foam behind them. And um, trying, uh, let's see if, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, no, I think you can see it, okay. I think we're in focus too. I'm trying to uh, open up the aperture here. Um, we'll actually close it off. Anyway, cameras. One of the things that made this board interesting is that I have a lot of um, subterranean rocks at subterranean subsurface. And those are gonna affect the breaking pattern of the waves they're going to kind of roll over the top of the rocks because they you know lift the wave artificially right there so i played around with that and um what i realized is I, especially when i got to this point i'll talk about this was what i did first um, but i didn't want to actually cover up all the rocks because they look great underwater they add a lot of interest and uh, if I cover them all up with foam, then what, you know, what was the point of having them there? And that's really um, what happened with this spot here. This was my first attempt. There's actually a, a quite a large rock here. It's, it's very shallow. And so that's really gonna roll the waves quite a bit. And I got um, a little aggressive in the wave height and their spacing, hmm, you know, I don't know. The waves are spaced sort of like that on the rest of the board. So it's probably not terribly out of alignment, but the main thing I realized when I finished this was, oh, wait a minute, there's a big rock under here, now you can't see it. Boo, you know, because it was really cool. Um, so this may be more realistic, but you know, the heck with that, I want to see these rocks. So um, that's why over here, I decided to uh, lay off on that a little bit and then make sure that you can see those uh, coming through here. Um, so. And that gives you a little bit of an idea of some of my thinking here, another look at some splashing on the rocks, and uh, you know some of the uh, uh, variations between the boards in terms of the way the, the shoreline is structured and, and how that affects motion. So that gives you a look at the ocean boards and uh, some of my thoughts on them. And uh, hopefully I'm not being too repetitive from previous videos. I don't like to do that, uh, but um, you know, 
some things have stuck in my craw, so I'm probably sharing them more than once. Uh, so what can you expect to see next in this project? Um, I have some uh, open water boards to do, which will be mercifully simple because I don't have to do any waves on them. Uh, but um, I have uh, another straight and uh, another um, concave corner to do. And then it's on to the island boards. And I'm pretty excited about the island boards um, because I'm going to be using um, a new rock mold. I just got it in. I just did the first test cast today um, from Bragdon uh, Enterprises. I have a Bragdon Enterprise rock mold review. That's a mouthful. Video didn't finish that mouthful and I'll put a link uh, here uh, to that video so you can go check that out. Um, they're an innovative sort of way of casting runks and uh, this mold actually that I just bought, oh it's, it's different and I won't tell you more about it just yet. I use that as an enticement. Come back and see it in a little bit. Uh, but uh, man the rock texture on it is so beautiful. It's going to look so good on the cliffs. Uh, but there's definitely some things I have to do to make that happen. So questions and comments always welcome down below. Um, I am trying to be briefer in my comments. I'm trying to manage my time a little bit better. Not my strong suit. Um, so please don't uh, be offended if um, I pass up on a couple comments that are uh, very short or I give you briefer answers. I'm just trying to manage my time. But if you have a question, I will always answer it. So uh, please feel free to leave those. And I think that's it. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, definitely more to come. I'm going to try and shoot some more videos real soon here. So let's get November off to a good start. Uh, so hopefully you will come back and join me because you know I'll have another Terranscapes video soon.